Good morning. Welcome to our online worship service of Kitsap Unitarian Universalist Fellowship. This is our final service using Zoom technology. Starting next week, we will be streaming to our website at www.kuuf.org. You can find out more information by checking the website or reading the candle newsletter. I invite you to follow along in the order of service. We, we will put the link for the order of service in the chat. Whoever you are and wherever you have come from, for this hour, we are one gathered congregation and all are welcome. My name is Ed Woods. I'm currently chair of the Building and Grounds Committee and I sing in the choir when we are meeting as a congregation in the sanctuary. Our worship leader this morning is our very own Reverend Jessica Starr Rockers, who is leading our beloved community through these crazy pandemic times as our established settled minister. I'd like to welcome any visitors. Please introduce yourselves in our chat box. For those who of you who want to share a chat with everyone attending, please change the chat to setting to all panelists and attendees. Otherwise, only those who are officiating during this worship service will see your chat. We usually welcome more interaction with all during our after service Zoom coffee hour. Today, however, after service, we will instead Zoom our annual congregational meeting. The link for that will go into the chat next. You will need to use the password coffee with a capital C to be admitted to this important gathering. All voting members are strongly encouraged to Zoom in as we tend to important budgetary issues in the coming fiscal year. Please zoom in by 1145 today so that we may promptly begin at noon. The announcements are available on our webpage, www.kuuf.org or our weekly email newsletter, The Candle. And now for our land acknowledgement by Nathaniel followed by our musical call to worship played by Brian Kenny voice still and small, number 391 in the singing the live and tradition, also known as our gray hymnal. Alina Hemingway and Mike Menefee will also perform in this short, sweet and moving hymn. My name is Nathaniel and I am a member of the Cheyenne River Sioux Tribe of the Lakota people. We would like to start today by acknowledging that the land on which we all live is the Aboriginal territory of the Suquamish, the Skalalum, and the Skokomish people. They have lived in harmony with the lands of waterways along Washington's central Salish Sea for thousands of years. These tribes still live here and protect the land and waters of their ancestors for future generations, as promised by the Point Elliot and Point No Point Treaties of 1855. Oh, 
Now, please join me in lighting our chalice. If you have your own chalice or candle at home, please light it as Ashlyn Ingalls says the chalice lighting words. I offer you peace, I offer you friendship, I offer you love, I see your beauty, I hear your needs, my wisdom comes from within, I honor the source in you, and let us work together. Our opening hymn, how Could Anyone has been used for every conceivable purpose to bring inspiration and affirmation to people struggling with every imaginable challenge and to celebrate the beauty of human beings everywhere. AIDS orphans in Zambia keeping their spirits high. Latina mothers initiating their daughters into adulthood the LGBTQIA affirming their inherent worth, children with disabilities at summer camp honoring their wholeness, Japanese women and girls recovering from eating disorders, and even male prison inmates making peace with their pasts. These groups and thousands more have made the song their own and used it to inspire powerful action on behalf of our shared community. This song is such a blessing. Please join in singing our opening hymn, How Could Anyone? Number 1053 in the Singing the Journey, also known as our Teal Hymnal. The lyrics will appear on your screen. Please join me in the spoken affirmation. The words will appear on your screen. We gather as a caring community seeking life's deeper meanings. We value diversity and affirm the worth of all living things. 
we strive to speak with truth, with love, truth and love, to act for justice, to grow in spirit, and to care for the earth. We celebrate with open hearts and minds the creative power that sustains and transforms us. Now it is time for our morning offering. If you would like to donate electronically, please click on the paypal.me link in the chat. You may then email admin at KUUF.org to let us know if your donation is for one, the KUUF general fund, two, the minister's discretionary fund to help our members in need, or three, our monthly charitable giving recipient for the month of April, South Kitsap Helpline. If you don't indicate to which fund you want your contribution to go, we will put it in our general fund. You may also send a check to the address on the screen. Please write in the memo line to which of the funds your offering should go. If this is your first time at KUUF, you are our guest, so there is no need to contribute. Let there be an offering to strengthen and sustain our community, which is sacred to so many of us. everyone. I am Reverend Jessica and it is time for our children's story. So I invite the young and the young at heart to scooch a little bit closer to the screen. I want to tell you an ancient story from Africa about feeling tired and disconnected and needing a rest. Maybe you know that feeling. Well, it is said that a Congolese scientist studying tropical plants once ventured into the Congolian rainforest, traveling across the basin of the Congo River in Central Africa, accompanied by representatives of the Ba Aka people who were local to that specific region and helping to guide the Congolese scientists study. Many of the Ba'aka people carried machetes in their hands and they made their way through the thick vegetation quickly. Because they were familiar with the forest, they were excellent guides and they moved through it confidently. The scientist was happy to be making good time. If a river appeared, they would cross it in the shortest time possible. If there was a hill, they quickened their pace. But then one day, without warning, the guides stopped. The scientist was surprised. They had only been walking for a few hours. So she asked the guides, why have you stopped? Are you already tired after just a few hours of walking? Then one of the guides looked at her and said, not only are we tired, but we have been moving so quickly, we have left our souls behind. Now we must wait for our souls to catch up with our bodies. And so they stopped and they rested and they noticed things in the forest they had never seen. And together with the scientist, they appreciated it all the more. I wonder if you ever feel tired and disconnected, like you aren't even grounded in your own body. 
Sometimes life gets so busy and we run from one thing to the next, we don't realize what we are missing until we take a moment to stop. And like the story says, allow our souls to come back into our bodies. Well, my husband has a saying that a cup of tea can keep body and soul together. But what does that mean, really? Well, a soul can mean a lot of things to Unitarian Universalists. Everybody believes something different. But generally, a soul is that spirit of life that animates you, that spark that makes you, you. And if you aren't feeling like yourself, you might be hungry or angry or lonely or tired. Any one of those things can make you feel like you aren't really connected to that spark of life. Well, do you know what I learned to say when I am hungry, angry, lonely, and tired? I learned to say HALT, H-A-L-T, hungry, angry, lonely, tired. And to HALT means to stop. Eat something, take a nap, find someone to talk to, maybe have a good cry, whatever you need to do. William would say, have a cup of tea. We each have different things that help bring body and soul back together. And in our story, that's what the guides in the forest did. They halted themselves, they stopped. They had been in too much of a hurry and it kept them from appreciating their surroundings and from being really present to the path that they were on. And I wanna teach you something that you can do if you need to halt. And this is a breathing exercise. So I'm hoping you will do this with me and with Liam. And so when you do a breathing exercise, it's good to kind of sit down. If you can put your feet down on the ground, you can do that. If you can't, that's okay too. You just be comfortable and sit up straight. You can do this laying down too, actually. You can do it whatever way you're comfortable. So we count from 10 down to one slowly. And for each number, we do one full breath in and out. And when we breathe in, we say, I am. And when we breathe out, we say, at peace. And you can say this out loud, or you can just say it in your, in your mind quietly. So let's do this. 10, I am out at peace. Nine, I am at peace. Eight. I am at peace. Seven. I am at peace. Six. I am at peace. Five. I am at peace. Four. I am at peace. Three. I am at peace. Two. I am at peace. And last one. I am at peace. Ooh, all that oxygen. I can feel it. That is a good halt meditation. Whenever we are hungry, angry, lonely, or tired, whenever we are feeling disconnected from ourselves, as if our souls aren't even in our bodies, we can pause and breathe and figure out what we need. Is it food? Is it a hug? Is it a nap? And maybe sometimes what we need is to sing. So are you ready? Are you ready? Mm -hmm. I know I am. So let's sing our song. And I know singing always brings me back to myself. Let's sing this little light of mine. <clears throat> This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. 
And thank you so much for singing along. Hmm. It's always nice to sing together. And now is the time for our joys and our sorrows. Though we are physically distanced from one another, our hearts and our spirits remain connected. When shared together, our joys are amplified and our sorrows mm -hmm. are lessened. If you have a personal joy or a sorrow to share, I invite you to put it in the chat this morning and I will read them aloud. And I have had a joy sent to me by email from Bunny Starica, and she writes, Matthias and I are proud to announce the birth of our sweet son and newest addition to our family, Andy James Starica. He was born at 4.34 a.m. on April 19th, weighing six pounds, 14 ounces, and measuring 20 inches long. We made it home and are working on recovering and catching up on sleep. We're all healthy and happy. Huge thanks to a job well done by Dr. Kristen and team. Congratulations, Bunny, Matthias, Rowan, and welcome, Andy. Congratulations, what a blessing. We certainly share in that joy with you. Bill and Terry have a joy for a wonderful day in Port Townsend with son Matt on Thursday. How wonderful. Lisa, joy for the bevy of barred owls we heard calling and responding to each other in their courting rituals. So grateful to live where we can hear wonders like this. How wonderful. Bonner says, yippee, Bunny, Matthias, Rowan, and Andy. Bonner also shares a joy to see Eloise zooming in today. How wonderful. Samantha has a joy for my new rescue puppy, Denali. Congratulations, how wonderful. Liz has a joy for all the new life and growth in the garden and under the grow lights, lots of baby plants. Congratulations, how fun. Guy has a joy for an outing with our grandchildren a week ago. Perfect. Maya, joy for the new neighbors down the street. How wonderful. 
Judith, gratitude for both the rain this week and the sun last week. Joy to see the trees unfurling their leaves. Sebastian, joy for being, for almost being nine months. I think that's months sober. Congratulations. That's a huge accomplishment, Sebastian. We share in that joy with you. Jessica has a sorrow for all the people, especially children seeking refuge in the US from Central America. Holding all of those children and family in our hearts today. Thank you, Jessica. Amelia, joy that we are watching two Harry Potter movies today. I hope you enjoy your, your rainy day movies. That sounds fun. Thank you everyone for sharing your joys and for naming your sorrows. In the spirit of community, we find strength and common purpose where we share our joys, our sorrows, our hopes, and our dreams. We have turned our minds and hearts toward one another in trust, giving love, seeking comfort, and celebrating together. We are part of the web of life that makes us one with all humanity, one with all the universe, in all the moments of our lives. For those loved ones and events spoken this morning, written in our chat, and for those we yet hold in the silence of our hearts, we are truly grateful for the love and support of this beloved community May the spirit of life and love bring peace to us all. Amen and blessed be. Give up the fight for some other moment, some other life than here and now. I'm just going to breathe. Give up the longing for some other world, the wishing yeah, for nothing, other choices to make, other songs to sing, other I'm bodies, other ages other countries, other stakes. Till I touch the sorrow neath the rage. I'm just gonna breathe. Purge the past. Forgive the future. Till there's For each comes too soon. Surrender only to this I'm life. This one. This moment here and now. 
surrender only to this day, this hour, this breath. Not because it does not constantly break your heart, but because it too beckons with beauty, startles with delight. If only we can keep waking up to this gift, this is the gift we have been given. These, these body clothes, this heartbreak, it's ours. This pulse, it's ours. This breath, this light, these friends, this hope. All we can do is remember ourselves here. I'm just gonna breathe. All. All. A part of it all. Still growing. Together. I'm just gonna breathe. Until I'm glad to breathe here for a while. We'll give up the thought. Some other love Just hope in the way That you are living you Give up the fight For some other love Just changing No longer resisting Come on and breathe, breathe, breathe Come on and breathe, breathe, breathe Gonna breathe, breathe, breathe. Come on and breathe, breathe, breathe. Give up the fight, breathe, breathe. Some other life, breathe, breathe. Give up the fight, breathe, breathe. Some other life, breathe, breathe. I'm just gonna breathe.
For six days, you may perform labor, but the seventh day is a complete Sabbath, a day of rest, holy to Adonai. It is an eternal sign that in six days, Adonai made heaven and earth, and on the seventh day, he rested and was refreshed. This is from the book of Exodus in the Hebrew Bible. In the Jewish tradition, the Sabbath begins on Friday at sunset. The Shabbat candles are lit and blessed, symbolizing the Torah teaching to remember and observe. Then the Kiddush and the Hamotzi are sung over the wine and the bread, and the Sabbath begins with a family or communal meal. In some Jewish communities, the Friday night meal is followed by a worship service. Some have their worship the next morning on Saturday. Then on Saturday evening at sunset, Shabbat is concluded with another prayer, the Havdalah. For Orthodox Jews, there are 39 melchot, 39 melchot, 39 forms of work that are forbidden on the Sabbath. Among them, cooking food, driving your car, handling money, or using technology. I really like that last one, a technology Sabbath, especially in this time of Zoom and social media fatigue. It speaks to me of something deeper than just rest for the sake of catching up on sleep or resting my body so I can go back to work the next day and be a more productive worker. It is about resting in the presence of the holy, a return to communion with the sacred and with religious community. It is about spiritual rest and renewal. Rabbi Marsha Prager writes that our practice of Shabbat restores primordial wholeness to the cosmos. It has the capacity to irrigate the thirsty world. It restores primordial wholeness to the cosmos. For those of us who have been living within a system of oppression and those of us who have spent our lives trying to dismantle that system, it feels pretty radical to say that ultimately rest and renewal in spiritual community is what will save us, what will heal and restore all that is broken. I think of the muscles in our bodies how they do such amazing work moving us around, holding up our skeletons, keeping our hearts beating and our brains working. And they have capacity to grow stronger when we put stress on them. And by stress, I mean the good and the bad. But the truth is they don't grow stronger with the stress. They grow stronger when they are healing at rest. And overworking the muscles without giving them proper rest, putting consistent stress without relief for a prolonged period of time leads to decreased immunity, elevated blood pressure, disturbed sleep, among other things. And our spirits are like our muscles. After a period of hard work, after a period of consistent stress, we need dedicated rest to recover and heal. This is how we grow spiritually stronger. And if we don't rest, all of our good efforts, all of our good work on behalf of our faith begins to work against us. We lose strength, we lose resilience, we lose our connection to one another, to our deeper selves, to the holy. Rest irrigates what is thirsty. And in a regular practice of Sabbath, we become part of a blessing, watering what is parched within ourselves, as well as being a conduit for renewal everywhere we go and with everyone to whom we are connected. When we rest, we can be grounded and present for our family and our community. When we rest, we return with more to give. In fact, on the Sabbath, each Jewish person in observance of Shabbat receives an extra soul, the additional Shabbat soul. Rabbi Rachel Berenblatt writes, that extra soul is part of who we are. 
but during the week, it's distant. In the Jewish tradition, we have two levels of soul, a lower soul, which enlivens the body, and a higher soul, which resides with the mystery we call God. On Shabbat, these two unite. The reality of who we are is joined with the potential of all that we might be. This is why the early 20th century Zionist theologian Ahad Ha'am wrote, more than the Jews have kept the Sabbath, the Sabbath has kept the Jews. For Jewish people who often have had to find community outside of their holy land, outside of their religious home, the Sabbath tradition creates community wherever they find themselves. In the Christian tradition, the Sabbath became Sunday, which happened during the Roman oppression of the Jewish people, when Christians sought to distance themselves from Judaism. And that's what we have inherited and why we worship on Sunday mornings. We come together to remember who we are, to rest here waiting for our souls to catch up. And not just the soul that resides in the body, the spirit of life that animates us, but the higher soul, that deeper connection to something larger, something mysterious. We gather here on Sundays to be nourished, to be reunited with what is most sacred to us. In observing Sunday worship together, we are brought back to ourselves. Now, one of the reasons I became a minister is because I love Sundays. I've said this before. I love going to church, the smell of the dusty hymnals, the light of the chalice candle, the creaky quiet of a sanctuary just before the opening hymn. I do experience this as a deep moment of soulfulness. I feel closer to what is most holy and sacred. And some of this has been lost to me, I don't know about you, during this pandemic, of course. Part of the extra soulfulness is the building itself, our sanctuary, though my home has become pretty sacred to me over this past year. Part of the soulfulness is all of you who I miss seeing, being physically close to. And part of it is just that overall feeling of the pandemic. Somehow I am connected all the time, Zooming and emailing and answering texts and phone calls. And somehow I feel more disconnected than ever. Perhaps you know what I'm talking about. And I'll be honest, my first impulse is to dig in deeper. I have been socialized in what might be considered a Protestant work ethic, but really I was raised by German Catholic farmers and Italian immigrants. So this work ethic isn't unique to the Protestants. It's about survival. And it is the story of the American dream, which says those who work hardest get the biggest reward. And so if something is feeling off, if I'm not getting the results I'm looking for, I'm just not working hard enough. When we begin to investigate the lies of white supremacist culture, we see how this doesn't add up. Religious traditions like Judaism and secular revolutions like the labor movement expose this fiction for what it is, something that ultimately steals our soul and our spirit, disconnects us from community and isolates us for the gain and the profit of a few. During the pandemic, we have had to face some uncomfortable but not unfamiliar truths that disparity in wealth and privilege can mean the difference between life and death, that our government doesn't operate to serve the people, and that our society does operate in ways that are totally unsustainable. So today, the last Sunday of this fiscal year, the Sunday where we gather for our annual congregational meeting after the service to make decisions about the year ahead, we might ask ourselves, who and how will we be in this community as we wrestle with the truths that we have faced? How will we center those who have been marginalized? How will we serve the people? And how will we operate counter to the dominant culture in a way that is sustainable. Some of this we do not know. Some of this we can only guess at because so much of the year ahead is uncertain. 
but some of the answer comes from how we are feeling in our bones. And a lot of us are tired. Author of the book, Sabbath, Wayne Mueller writes, Sabbath time can be a revolutionary challenge to the violence of overwork, mindless accumulation, and the endless multiplication of desires, responsibilities, and accomplishments. Sabbath is a way of being in time where we remember who we are, remember what we know, and taste the gifts of spirit and eternity. Like a path through the forest, Sabbath creates a marker for ourselves. So if we are lost, we can find our way back to center. And so we pause here today to remember and observe. It is our Sabbath. When we breathe and pray and sing together, whether we can hear one another or not, and we renew ourselves in community and we wait for that extra soul to catch up. When we have a regular practice of Sabbath, when we have observed it consistently, taken that time each week to connect with the higher self, with the holy, with community, it is easier to do it. The soul we are missing arrives quickly. But when we haven't taken our Sabbath, like the children's story we told today, when we push ourselves past what is reasonable, draw on reserves we do not have, it takes time for that soul to arrive. These past 12 months have been like no other. Each one of us carries a particular fatigue from having to navigate the delicate balance of keeping ourselves safe, showing up for our community and our family and staying connected using technology that often drains us. And the pandemic has asked of us so much that we are all way overdue for a rest. Our societal conditioning tells us that in order to get through this, we need to dig in deeper, work harder, put in more energy and effort. And if we were a corporation whose survival was dependent on the bottom line, we might have no choice but to push through in this way. But we are a religious community. We are descendants of Jewish and Christian traditions that pushed back against the demands of the secular world and invited us to listen to that still small voice within. The consistent stress of this pandemic and the crisis mode that many of us have been in for a long while must come to an end. Those who have been serving in leadership positions throughout this pandemic have the opportunity now to set aside those responsibilities for the sake of their own spiritual, mental, and emotional health. Those who feel they have the time and energy might consider what they can offer to this community to give our tired leadership a chance to rest and recharge. And in the end, in the end if something is unsustainable, perhaps we might consider not spending resources trying to sustain it. And I am deeply grateful to our leadership because in spite of all that has happened, we have had a very successful year. We have survived and thrived. And I love to think that our next year will be one of continued growth. But I will tell you that from what I see, the muscles of our fellowship need a rest. Our staff, our volunteers, our leaders have carried an enormous weight. And I wanna say now, thank you to everyone our board, our staff, our worship team, our fellowship council committees, all of you who have contributed time and talent and treasure, especially those of you who did it when you felt you had nothing left to give. You led us through a national disaster. And in order for us to continue growing strong, we all need to take a rest. The beautiful thing is that it doesn't really take as much time as we think. When we are sitting in a place of fatigue, beleaguered by resentments and confusion, we think, oh my gosh, I have this huge responsibility and I have nothing left to give. I have failed, I should give up. But our ancient teachings tell us, in fact, we just need to pause for a moment, take a breath, share a meal with our beloveds, connect with what is most holy and ground ourselves in those places where we find renewal.
nature, music, laughter, our loved ones. We can do it in small doses or large, but we have to do it consistently. And remember, many of us are long overdue. So take the time you need, however long it takes. And while Unitarian Universalists do not believe the world was created in six days, we do recognize the spiritual truth in that story, that the holiest day isn't all those days of creation, all those days of work, when we accomplished our goals and got everything done, where we learned Zoom and led congregational meetings, where we ordained ministers and called forth new leadership, where we surpassed our auction goal and our stewardship goal, all of this incredible work of creation. And yet the holiest day is the day of rest. May we all take the rest we need in the weeks and months ahead, however long it takes for our souls to catch up and offer that opportunity with grace to one another so that we can continue to grow our spiritual muscles, our beloved community, our precious congregation, and continue to build our capacity to offer spiritual nourishment to a parched and thirsty world. May it be so.
say we make one more circle, one more circle, one more circle. And now it is time for us to set our intentions for the week ahead. I invite you to share a word or a phrase that will guide your heart and mind this week and maybe even the next 12 months. And if you feel called to, put your answer in the chat and I will read them aloud. Take a risk. Like Tevya to life. Rest, repair, rejuvenate. We are enough. Let go. Persevere with an open heart. Allow recovery. Life is good. New beginnings. Love. Thank you everyone for sharing your intentions for all of those that we hold in our hearts and for all of those that we have spoken aloud. We are grateful. Believe. That's our last one. Believe. I like that. And now for our closing hymn, number 1001 from Brian, Elena, and Mike Breaths. Tis the ancestor's breath 
Thank you everyone for being here today. Next week for worship, we will no longer be using Zoom technology. We will be live streaming to our website using YouTube. So in order to attend worship, you'll need to go to our website, kuuf.org. You can also attend by subscribing to our YouTube channel and watching us there. And the link to that is on our website, kuuf.org. Dot org. In order to participate in the chat, you will need a YouTube account. So this week, if you need help setting that up, you can email us at media at kuuf.org and we will help you get set up so you can be ready for next Sunday. We're really excited. This is change, again, no doubt, and will likely take some adjustment. On behalf of the worship team, I ask for a little grace as we get the hang of it, but it will make our worship services easier to produce, so a lot of less stress on our worship team, and a higher quality for all of you attending. And it is also a good sign of better things to come. Our coffee hours will continue to be on Zoom, even after our transition to YouTube, so Zoom is not going away completely. And today, after our service in place of coffee hour, we will be having our annual congregational meeting. And the link for that will appear in the chat. And you can click on that and go directly to the meeting. I strongly encourage you to attend. We are voting on the budget and new leadership and hearing about important fellowship business for the year ahead. And the password for that is still coffee with a capital C. And now let us extinguish our chalice. If you have a chalice that is lit or a candle, I invite you to extinguish yours with me. When the weight of the world tips us over, when the winds of the world leave us spinning, when the voices of the world lead us astray, may we remember that here, Home is always waiting, with stillness to calm us, friends to anchor us, and voices to help us find our way. Amen, Ashe, may it be so. Blessings, everyone. <laughs>